The seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet Williams steam locomotive, part 45. A closer look at the saddle tank to see how it is made and machining the top caps of the check valves to improve their appearance and allow a minor adjustment to the height of the tank. This clip shows the tank as it did in the previous episode sat on what's left of my workbench which as you can clearly see from this clip is very messy at the moment but once I've finished this engine I'm going to tidy it up. Currently I'm working on quite a few projects and I just don't have enough space. In this clip you can see the construction of the tank, it's very well made indeed. The outer part of the tank including the front and rear and the outer wrapper are riveted and soft soldered together and then there's a special part that sits in the middle. This tank is perfect for the job because it's not finished. I need to fit some mounting brackets at the front to mount onto these existing mountings which supported the front of the really ugly side tanks that were fitted. The tank curves on the lower outer edges. This mounting bracket is 18 inches long and the width of the tank is 18 inches but that does not include the curvature at the bottom sides of the tank. I'm going to cut this bracket on the dotted line that you see here. Then I'm going to make a special bracket that attaches to the tank which will be approximately the same width as the distance between these two dotted lines. When I look at a lot of model saddle tanks, the tank is held to the smoke box at the front with brackets, but I can't do it with this one as it's slightly too short. The bracket that I make, which will mount where I've just shown, will also have to mount to the tank in approximately this position. It will all make sense once the part is completed. In the last episode I showed me painting the footplate and here's a clip from the previous episode of the paint drying. As this is etching primer I'm going to give it another day to fully harden before I spray it with the black paint. In this episode I'm going to machine the top caps of both of the check valves to make them a bit slimmer. I'm also going to polish them up because they will be visible once the tank is in place. But the real reason for making the hexagon top caps a bit shorter is because at the moment they're just a fraction too long and they touch the tank when it's in the correct position. These top caps are not just blanking plugs, they also have a ball travel limiter built in on the inside. This is to stop the stainless steel balls when they lift off the valve seat going all the way up and blocking the inlet into the boiler. First of all though, a quick word of warning, do not do it this way. Yes it works, you can machine the end of the part like this, but it's only held by a very thin piece of brass which could break off or become damaged. In this clip I'm only taking a very fine cut, I daren't take any more of a cut otherwise it will go wrong. A simple solution, I just screw the top cap into a 1 8 BSP union nut. Then I fit the union nut in the chuck jaws, which allows me to turn the part without fear of anything breaking or going wrong. I'm still taking quite gentle cuts, there's no point in trying to do it in one. This is a very simple job, until of course I do it wrong. Then I would have to make a completely new part, which would take much longer than just turning the end of this one. Note to self, change the tip on this tool, it is getting a bit blunt. But it's doing the job and the finish on the end of the piece of brass is quite good. During the facing operation I'm taking very fine cuts which means I have to turn the handle of the cross slide very slowly and because I do not have an engineer's brain I find this really tedious. How much am I taking off? Well I really don't know, when it looks right it is right. What I've done here as an experiment is change the tool. This is an entirely different lathe tool, and look at the finish it gives. Why is that? Well, it's the tool angle, it's very pointy, it's not really a good facing tool, and, once again, the tip is blunt. This is always a problem with lathe tools, and with the tipped type, you have to change them, you can't just trim them on the green grip wheel. I refitted the original tool, which is much better, and here I'm actually taking the final cut. I think that the thickness of the hexagon part in this top cap is about right. What I need to do next is just clean up the edges using some emery cloth. 
As can clearly be seen here, I've folded over the piece of emery cloth quite a few times. This keeps my fingers well away from the work and the chuck jaws. No health and safety warning required here. This is just common sense. Be aware that even a small miford could do a lot of damage. The lathe is much harder than you are. I'm now machining the other top cap, but I'm doing it in a different way. Why is this? It is just to ease the monotony of the job. I'm not facing across the front. I'm taking quite a lot of longitudinal cuts. And once I've got the part to nearly the thickness that I require, then I'll start the facing operation. And here we go. And once again, I pose the question, how thick do I need the part to be? Well, it needs to be the same thickness as the one I've just done for the other side. You can hear the intermittent cut sound, which disappears once the tool starts to cut just the brass without the hexagon part. Here I'm looking at the job and taking into consideration that once I've chamfered the edge using the emery cloth, this top cap should end up being more or less identical to the other one that I machined. And one more time, I'm using the emery cloth folded over into a very thick pad. And even though my fingers are close to the chuck, they're not going to make contact with either the work or the chuck jaws. This is an important consideration. I polished up the parts using my polishing spindle in the outer part of the workshop, and they both look quite nice now. Not perfectly flat, but such is life. All I need to do now is apply some of this stuff. It's called Bond Lock 542, very similar to Loctite 542. With the combination of this sealant that I've just applied and the PTFE tape that was already there, the top caps on both of these check valves should be fine. In the next episode of this series, I will be removing the original mounting bracket, modifying it and then putting it back. But that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.